McLaren has made some impressive gains in Formula 1 this season, ending its long drought of victories and pole position. While the team accepts that it can't yet match Mercedes and Red Bull at every racetrack, its pace has been good enough to all but consolidate its place as third best in F1, with Ferrari nipping at its heels in the Constructors' Championship. Despite requiring a unique driving style, the MCL 35M appears to be a relatively benign car, much like its predecessor, and with that in mind, the team has been careful not to create too much of an imbalance when it's introduced updates. So let's take a look at what's kept McLaren in the hunt for third place in the Constructors' Championship in 2021, and let's start with the obvious, the Mercedes power unit. Right off the bat, McLaren's push has been helped in part by the team's return to Mercedes power. The Merck power unit has long been regarded as the best F1 has seen in recent years, as if the Silver Arrow streak of hybrid era domination isn't proof enough. So it wasn't entirely unexpected to see Norris and Ricardo get a bit of a boost compared to last year's MCL35 with the Renault engine. But what is proof of this though is McLaren's ability to adapt and improve its technology to suit the new setup. After all, it's not as simple as removing one engine and adding another, it's an intrinsic piece of the design, and as production director Piers Thin said in January, essentially we've been building a new car. The number of the new parts on the MCL35M is about the same as when we built the MCL35. Of course, this was a task made even more complicated given the homologation and token system that was introduced for 2021. With other teams able to spend tokens and upgrade their car to improve performance elsewhere, McLaren was effectively forced to spend its tokens on integrating the Merck power unit into a car not originally designed to cater for it. But it clearly wasn't a fruitless endeavour. Despite changing the majority of its chassis and a huge amount of the internals to suit, the new power unit seems to be treating the team very well. But that's not the only change they've made to their 2021 machinery, as they sought to combat 2021's new aero rules. At the rear of the car, McLaren came up with a novel solution to recover lost downforce triggered by F1's new aero regulations. The changes required that the vertical strakes in the diffuser be 50mm shorter, in an effort to reduce downforce produced in the diffuser area. But by connecting the most central strakes to the diffuser's central transition, McLaren's workaround meant that it could retain the lower format and retain some of the lost downforce. No one else has taken up the idea on the grid, but the strakes remain on the car to this day, suggesting that even with new or updated components elsewhere on the car, the design has proven effective for the team. Further forward, McLaren has also employed multiple floor updates, in line with the downforce hacking regulations. McLaren had been the first team to publicly test the new floor rules when it trialled a tapered floor at 2020's Belgian Grand Prix. Clearly happy with the design, it began this year with a similar setup, while the rest of the grid jumped on the Z cutout solution. McLaren then saw the potential of the Z cutout scene on the other cars and became the eighth team to adopt the design of the Spanish Grand Prix. This was followed up at the Austrian Grand Prix by introducing a cluster of fins behind the side pod in order to better manage the airflow's path towards the cutout and optimise the flow around the car's rear tyre. While the diffuser solution is unique, McLaren appears to have found a winning combination with the Z cutout and central mounted strakes. But McLaren did more to just counter the new rule set, with the team bringing multiple new updates to the rest of the MCL 35M throughout the year. For the French Grand Prix in June, the team brought a new rear wing design, featuring a horizontal louvered panel at the base of the end plate, where teams ordinarily run a row of vertical strakes. And this is a similar idea that already featured in the overhanging section of the end plate above, albeit inverted for the lower half of the end plate. And interestingly, that's a design concept that was introduced by Haas when the regulations first changed back in 2019. It has since found its way onto several cars, they looked to find ways to improve downforce and reduce drag. McLaren also added some chassis horns for the French Grand Prix, along with a new side pod and engine cover package that tightened up the MCL 35M's rear end even more. This resulted in a smaller rear cooling outlet for when demands aren't high, allowing for some aerodynamic gains along the way. When temperatures run higher, the team uses louvered panels beside the driver to help keep things cool, before having to resort to a larger rear outlet. The team also made changes to its bargeboard cluster for the Hungarian Grand Prix, with the upper boomerang becoming more of a prominent feature, and the lowermost piece taking a secondary role. But last but certainly not least, McLaren developed a new front and rear wing combination for the Italian Grand Prix, and we all know how that race went. The rear wing was traditionally a standard setup for Monza, the main plane and top flap were far more shallow than usual, aiming for minimal drag and downforce, allowing the drivers to full send it down the long straights. In order to extract the most from the car as a whole, the front wing was all about balancing against the shallow rear wing. The team had lightly pushed the standard configuration to its limits with the adjuster, so opted to trim away the trailing edge of the upper flap as well. 
It led to McLaren's first win since 2012 and the first 1-2 finish of the season. And its points tally for this year is already above what it finished 2020 with, something which is hugely commendable. Whether or not it will clinch third place from Ferrari is yet to be determined, but between the hard work by the drivers, the race crew and the team at the factory, McLaren is having its most successful year in Formula 1 in nearly a decade. <laughs>